Oh, the mornings are getting chilly. Uh, a little while ago we were looking at the Lacamoire system and I realised in the anterior eye there are lots of there are lots of structures and it's all a bit complicated. Let's have a look at the bits we can see in the anterior eye. So let's, let's have a look at the anterior part of the eye because there are quite a lot of structures here, there are some layers, it's not clear, well some of it's clear, it's confusing, there's more to it than meets, than meets the eye. I could do with a refresh on this as much as anybody else, so let's just see what we can see, alright? So first of all then, the palpable, palpebral fissures. So the palpable fissures are the, it's the gap between the, the upper and lower eyelids. So as you open and close, as you open the upper and lower eyelids, we have this gap in between. And in that gap, we can see the eyeball. That shape made by the gap between the eyelids is the palpebral fissure. It's a term worth knowing because often the shape of the palpebral fissures change in certain congenital syndromes and in some diseases and that sort of thing but that's all that means is the space between the eyelids so if those are the palpebral fissures what are the palpebrae what is a palpebra yeah it's an eyelid all right palpebra we see levator palpebrae superioris is a muscle that lifts levator the superior eyelid Oh, the eyes are drying out already. Okay, where the palpebral fissures meet on either side, we have a canthus, this angle here and here. So we have a medial canthus and a lateral canthus. And we saw some lacrimal apparatus in the medial canthus in, uh, in the last video. These also get called the palpebral commissures. So a commissure is where things meet. So the palpebrae, the palpebrae meet here at the palpebral commissure. This would be the lateral palpebral commissure or the lateral canthus. This would be the medial palpebral commissure or the medial canthus. If you say it a lot, it seems to get easier. You might have heard the term epicanthic folds. Now you know about the canthus, do you have an idea about what an epicanthic fold might be? Epi, upon. So this would be a fold of skin upon the canthus. I don't, I don't have epicanthic folds, don't, don't bother looking. Now, much of what we can see of the eyeball is the, is the white of your eyes. The white is the sclera. The sclera is a tough, fibrous, opaque connective tissue. So there's a lot of collagen there and elastin. It's really important because it's the sclera that's giving the shape of the eyeball with fluid inside, the vitreous humor. And the shape of the eyeball is really important to the function of the eyeball, how the light passes through and is collected by the retina and things like that. So the sclera is really important. It's incredibly sensitive. Um, it's innervated by the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, so cranial nerve V1, or however we want to write that. Um, it's continuous with the cornea, which is the transparent bit, and the cornea is very similar, and we'll come to that in a moment. The sclera is covered by the conjunctiva, so the conjunctiva is a thin, clear layer covering the sclera, and the sclera is the white part of the eye. The sclera um, doesn't have very many blood vessels. Because the sclera is, is almost avascular, because it doesn't have much of a blood supply, it relies on nearby capillary beds, but it also relies on the fluids and the layers overlying the sclera to give it nourishment. 
the, the lacrimal system and the eyelids are protecting the sclera. The oxygen is taken out of the air and diffuses into the fluid and the oxygen and nutrients are then passed to the sclera to maintain it. Don't forget it's a connective tissue so it doesn't need a huge amount of energy. Uh, the sclera in humans is white but if we look at other animals we see that it's not white. It's often a dark colour and different colours. Now the sclera covers the whole eyeball. We can just see the bit anteriorly, the white bit. But the sclera is so tough that the extraocular muscles that we move, use to move the eye attach to the sclera. Now where the sclera meets the cornea, and the cornea is the clear structure that's covering over the iris and the pupil, we'll talk about those in a moment, it, there's, a, there's a change in the angle so the cornea sticks out a little bit. So we have the curve of the sclera and then like a bigger curve of the cornea. So the cornea is like a bubble sticking out from the sclera. So we have a, a, a corneal limbus and the corneal limbus is where the, the sclera becomes the cornea. So it's kind of like a circular thing right, around, the, around the cornea. So if the cornea is similar to the sclera, the main difference of course is that it has to be transparent. This is where the light is entering the eye. And the reason it sticks out a little bit is because posterior to the cornea is the anterior chamber, which has aqueous humor within it. And that curve and that fluid contributes to the optical power of the eye. It's refracting light, it's bending light so that it gets to the retina appropriately to describe very briefly. Um, so where we, can see the ret where we can see the iris and the pupil, we're looking through the cornea there. Now the conjunctiva is covering the sclera, but it's not covering the cornea. We're gonna come back to the conjunctiva in a moment. So the cornea is uh, structurally similar to the sclera. It's tough, fibrous, connective tissue, but it seems that the collagen fibers, the type one collagen fibers in the cornea are arranged in rows and somehow this seems to help with the, the light passing through the cornea. So it produces something that's fairly tough, but is transparent. It's incredibly sensitive. One of the most sensitive parts of the body and it is avascular. So for it to be transparent, we need to not have any blood vessels in there. So the nutrients and oxygen and metabolites and CO2 and what have you have to get to the cornea in a different way. And again, like the sclera, uh, there, there's no conjunctiva covering the cornea. So like the sclera, the fluid that's covering the cornea, the lacrimal fluid and what have you, is carrying the oxygen from the air, it's diffusing the lacrimal fluid and it's, 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 it's taking nutrients to the, to the cornea. The aqueous humor posterior to the cornea is also then supplying nutrients to the cornea. The iris then is a thin pigmented epithelium and it's lying upon the lens and really it's a, it's a diaphragm, right? So it can, and in the center of the diaphragm is the pupil. The reason the pupil is black is because that's the hole into the eyeball, which is, it's dark in there, right? You, you've seen what happens when you take a flash photograph. Does anybody take flash photographs these days? Um, you see um, a red pupil because the light is bouncing off the retina. The light, you get a lot of light into the eye ball. The retina is filled with blood vessels, so you get a red reflection. So the eyes look red and demonly, right? Anyway, so the iris, is it a pigmented epithelium so that it's more effective at absorbing light? So then the, 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 the aperture, the size of the pupil is most effective, maybe. So the diameter of the pupil changes in response to how much light there is. Uh, and that's the iris changing the diameter of the pupil. But we've talked about this elsewhere. Um, have a look at that video. Okay, the final bit to talk about is something we can't see, but we can kind of see, and it's the conjunctiva. Now the conjunctiva, this is a little bit complex and confusing, but it's a thin, transparent epithelium 
covering the sclera, or at least part of it is, so the conjunctiva that covers the white of the eye doesn't cover the cornea, just covers the sclera. That's the bulbar conjunctiva, bulbar. Does that, does that come from the word meaning onion? It's a bit like an onion skin, isn't it? Anyway, bulbar conjunctiva is covering the sclera. So it's a protective epithelium. It has got some small blood vessels in there. It's got some little goblet cells which produce mucus. It's got some accessory lacrimal glands making a bit of lacrimal fluid. We'll find a few cells and bits and bobs in there, a little bit of, um, little bit of uh, lymphatics and what have you. So, you know, it's a thing. It's another protective layer of, of the eye. Um, talking of conjunctival blood vessels, I burst one. Uh, lifting heavy in the, I say heavy, I'm only small, you know, but <laughs> lifting heavy for me in the gym a while ago. Um, I got those photos. Yeah, I remember because the blood leaks really slowly. So as you, as you sleep, the blood trickles one way and then during the day it trickles down and as you sleep it trickles again. <laughs> Very strange. Anyway, eventually the blood gets resorbed. So here's the trick. The eyelid the, the deep surface of the eyelid, so the inner surface of the eyelid, is also covered with conjunctiva. Guess what that's called? It's called the palpebral conjunctiva, right? So that bulbar conjunctiva is actually continuous with the palpebral conjunctiva. And you can see that the palpebral conjunctiva is much redder. There's lots of blood vessels in there, right? Um, so can you imagine that it, the conjunctiva covering the sclera goes back into the recesses and then folds back up. So it's one continuous membrane covering the sclera and lining the internal surfaces of the eyelids. So that means that we have a conjunctival fornix. Yeah, that's that fold. So there's a loose fold between the, con the, the sclera, between the conjunctiva covering the sclera and the conjunctiva lining the eyelid, because that is what gives us a free movement of the eye. You can imagine if the, that conjunctiva was tightly stuck to both, you wouldn't be able to move your eyeball, would you? The, the, the plica semilunaris is a curve, semilunaris, right, half moon. It's a curve of the bulbar conjunctiva up against the caruncle. Do you remember the caruncle? Where the lacrimal, so the lacrimal apparatus is. So that again is a loose fold next to the caruncle in the medial canthus and again there's a loose fold which makes it easy for us to move our eyes now if you understood all of that that means you know what those terms mean anatomy is terminology it's all good right now it's your turn go and look at your eyes in a mirror and see all those things that you can see and can't see the transparent things in your anterior eye all right good luck see you next time